Oh, okay, it's Nick Dutch back again. Uh, straight out of the bath and clean clothes prior to going out. But I'm here today to look at this uh, one particular private message that's come through, and it says, Hi, Nick. Hi. Uh, I think you look younger without the hat. Well, that's news to me. I thought I'd suddenly turn into a geriatric without it, you know, sort of like drain away the sort of like youthful, virile, you know, whatever the fuck it was I thought I had at the time. Okay. It says here, I watched your video about employment. I was wondering if you have time. How did you find tarot? How did you learn tarot? Was it difficult or stressful to do your very first live tarot calls for tarot clients? Okay, well, how did I find tarot? How did I discover tarot? Well, it's it's the thing for for, for the European Union. It's it's the it's the, the the one thing that we use around here. Um, in uh, you know Judeo-Christian countries, tarot is the thing, because of history and the rest of it. If I, was, if I was living in Africa, I'd be using the African bone system. And yes, I met a lady who used the African bone system a while ago. I'm sure if I was living in China, I'd be using um, I Ching or mahjong tiles, because that would be the thing for the area. You know, so tarot you find out about tarot because tarot was to do with. I mean, if you're in like uh, Australia, Europe, the UK. Uh, USA, you're more likely to be influenced by tarot than by any other system, okay? There's also the shamanic stuff in America, but you know, just, it's there. How did I get into it? Well, I, I got into it the same way I got into anything. You know, you have an idea one day, or you see something, or you read something, and you build upon your knowledge bit by bit. Uh, you try one thing, you explore, experiment with that. If it doesn't quite do it for you or doesn't quite get you what you seem to be looking for, you change your ideas and you explore a bit more in another direction. That's the same way everyone gets into everything. There wasn't sort of like one particular specific premise I was trying to investigate. Well, I suppose there was, and it was about um, my prophetic dreams, but I wanted to just see whether divination tools would actually help with that side of things, and I wasn't sure. But essentially, I was thinking to myself, like, as I got involved in like the pagan movements and the rest of that, uh, you know, I, I'm looking out for a few things here. I'm either looking out to to be a part of this as a spirituality, uh, or I'm looking out for this to be part of um, an industry to help people because I have a big heart for other people, um, or I'm you know I'm looking into this to try and improve, um, you know, psychic skills and that sort of thing. And so I was just approaching it from all different angles. And so I sort of like blended all of them into what I am today, realistically speaking. How did I learn tarot? Well, you learn tarot the same way you learn everything, okay? You get out there, you get yourself some books, you practice, you, you make a lot of mistakes. I know this one lady who works in, or she, she runs a PC business, you know, a computer business. And there's all kinds of other PC, you know, computery, technology, timey-wimey weird stuff. And she told me that, you know, when she's talking to her clients, her clients say, well, how did you find out how to mend a computer? And she says, because I blew up more than you have done. You know, I, you know they, they've gone bang. <laughs> because, you know, it's quite obvious. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. You can't um, do well without having done badly and having learned from, made some serious mistakes. And, and yeah, I've made mistakes. You know, I, I threw myself into this. When I was in my teens and 20s, I went out there, you know, dressed like a complete, I was dressed really badly. And I did psychic fairs. I actually did that. No training, no education, no nothing apart from having read a few books and practiced by myself. And went out there at the age 18, got my little moped, you know, straight down the road. Ended up in a psychic fair, set up my table, it looked crap, looked totally disgusting. And I did my readings then, okay. I had my first experience of the psychic industry then. Uh, and of course I returned back to it sort of eight, nine years ago, um, no, eight, eight years ago, roughly. And started taking it, you know, as a, as a, as a profession. Okay. Rather than doing anything else, because like it resonates well with me. It's the way I, it's the way I'm put together. You know, I said in my work video that, on my employment video that there's, you know, something about the way in which like I'm put together that means I've got certain ways in which I can do things. So I've got to work out what's thing in the outer world fits in with that okay because you don't want to be a round peg in a square hole you want to be someone who fits in with what you're created to be so to speak and that's if you you know believe in creation or in all terms of what you've evolved to be or what your circumstances have made you as let's put it that way just to try and keep absolutely everybody in the whole wide world happy no matter what theological persuasion they're a part of or not oh dear religious debate on youtube oh god diabolical man all right 
Okay, was it very difficult or stressful to do your very first live calls for tarot clients? Yes. I mean, the very first day when I sat down to do this, you know, I'd set up my profiles. It finally got approved after days and days and days. I was all excited. I was also terrified, sort of, you know, asked my parents very nicely if I can use their phone line. I got the extension going all the way up the stairs and or across the landing, I should say, uh, into my bedroom. Um, have myself a desk set up. Uh, this very desk is what I worked on in the end. And I set it up to try and look like a stall at a psychic fair because I felt to myself, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, you know, adrenal glands going a bit too much. Uh, I'm, I'm going to look the part. If I look the part, I'll play the part. Had a little um, prism uh, which had little LED lights underneath it which changed color. And in the prism was my astrological symbol and had that on my desk and I was just trying to you know, trying to get into the zone and, and hey Presley, the phone actually rang, you know, like, what the fuck, um, you know, I've got a customer, I've got a customer, uh, which was quite exciting, but also quite frightening, um, and I started working, got myself five calls on the first night, and that was the start of something good, and of course I worked on that company, I started working on another company on, alongside it, started working on another company alongside it, which eventually d declined, got myself into, you know, I mean, this is just the way it is, you know, you, you get known, you get experience, you get practice, you get training, you get advice, uh, you, you know, you talk to other people who can advise you and help you because it's a business, and this is something you mustn't forget, that, you know, this is, a, this is an industry, it's a business, okay, uh, it's not just a question of, oh, I want to go out there like St. Francis and be like totally, totally poor and not be able to feed myself just so I can help people, you know, that's not very healthy. Um, so, you know, you do it for the money, but also you do it because you want to do some good using this as a vehicle to do it, okay? And this is not the therapeutic industry, this is the entertainment industry, but I'm using it in a therapeutic way deliberately. That's why I get people calling me back telling me how accurate I was, how good I was, how useful I was, how they would have lost their housewife and child or whatever the fuck it was if they hadn't spoken to me, all right? So I'm doing real good in a very peculiar way, if you get my drift, okay? Uh, but, you know, tarot clients themselves can be very difficult because these people come to you to ask you a question because they want an answer, all right? And the answers might not always be what they want to hear. The questions themselves might not necessarily be what I want to hear. I mean, there's situations out there of people who have um, great, you know, great quantity of wealth. They can look after themselves and the rest of it, right down to people who are homeless and living in a hostel or indeed living, a, you know, under a under a cardboard box and they've taken all the money they got from their begging to pay you know put into the payphone so they can talk to me all right this is this is the kind of thing that happens then you, you know there's uh people who are perfectly safe in their body and those who are in, in, in whose bodies are endangered you get those who are involved in perfectly wholesome pursuits and those who are not involved in perfectly wholesome pursuits. There are those who obey the law and those who are professional criminals. Okay? Then, you know, once in a while you can get some amazing, you know, you even get famous people calling you, okay? Just once in a while. I'm not going to say give any names. I mean, and you can get people who are involved in some of the bigger scandals in the world. They call you because they need your advice and assistance, and I'm there for them, okay? Uh, and it's all very draining. You know, it's literally the richest to the poorest. So there's no sort of like, um, oh, they're all one particular type of person. No, they're, they're bullshit, okay? Or, oh, they just all this, or they just all that. No. And sometimes it's really painful. And sometimes I can't help someone. And I let them know. There's some questions I'm not legally allowed to answer, like those involved with pregnancy, medical matters, childbirth, paternity, and some legal issues. All right? Mm. Is it stressful? It can be. And also, I mean, there is the cliche of, like, the person who's inquiring about their love life or about a romantic situation. Oh, you know, isn't that a bit whatever? No. Um, because this is to do with people's social interactions, understandings, misunderstandings, and all the complexities of being human. And the customer wants to know, so they've got the edge in a complex situation. 
okay? So you've got to understand so much more than the average individual. You've got to really be empathic uh, on a broader scale uh, and a broader quantity of depth than probably in any other job on the face of the planet. You've got to have tact, diplomacy. Um, it can be real hard. But it's good because I make it good. Because I am good, I believe. Okay, I've done. I've 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 done my fair share of things that are wrong, or stupid, or insane, or inappropriate. Because I'm human, all right. And all humans have have made lots of mistakes. But doing this work, you come into such a deeper level of understanding of the human condition than anything. And you know, it's an experience you can't really put too much into words to the ordinary person is just not doable it's it's intense man truly intense uh but you know as far as like learning this stuff uh if you don't play with it it won't get better 